For many years, this sailor has stood the watch. While some of us were in our bunks at night, this sailor stood the watch. While some of us were in school learning our trade, the shipmate stood the watch. Yes, even before some of us were born into this world, this sailor stood the watch. In those years when the storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizon of history, this shipmate stood the watch. Many times he would cast an eye ashore and see his family standing there needing his guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times, but he still stood the watch. I've known from the time I was about five or six, seven years old, I was going to be a CB. I mean, yeah, we were a, a, a band of brothers. And there's a term in the Navy and Marine Corps, it used to be a term called hard chargers. Late 20s, 30s, 40s was the normal age. Trained skills all, right off the bat. And they were there to get a job done. He, over there, like a mechanic, like a Marvin Shields and Jim Wilson, his uh, mentor, uh, they had their equipment all in order. So what they're going to do, they're going to help the builders. They're going to help the utility man put up a uh, shower or something and help everybody else. And what it is, is everybody helps everybody. 1104 was the team that was there. But you could take any other number and put that team in there. And the only thing you do in the history books is change the name. It would be a very short edit. The things that were accomplished would be the same. The things that were done would be the same. There would be no difference in any of that because that's what we were trained to do. And that's what we did. We did what we were trained to do. Marvin G. Shields, born December 30th, 1939 in Port Townsend, Washington, enlisted in the Navy January 8th, 1962. After construction training, he served with Mobile Construction Battalion 11 and then with CB Team 1104 at Dong Zui, South Vietnam, June 10, 1965, when a Viet Cong regiment attacked. Marvin Shields was a hard charger. Very happy fellow. Uh, smiling. Big smile. <laughs> always there, always willing to help. He, he, he didn't do halfway on anything. Positive, upbeat. Um, guy would be easy to like. He was an excellent camp cook. Uh, he did more cooking for us, I guess, than anybody else. He was really good at it, you know? Very happy. I to get, make people happy, all the way till the end. After being wounded, Shields continued to carry ammunition to the firing line, and after receiving a second wound, insisted on helping a more severely wounded soldier to safety. Oh, he was just doing everything he could do to help everybody there in order to defeat the enemy. And the first thing he thought of was have to get to that ammo that was on fire and get some of that ammunition and get it to people after he was injured already. He was still moving back and forth and um, again that upbeatness uh, was the thing that was still coming out of him. We had the oddball weapons. The Army, Army Special Forces all had the AR-15s, the, the early, the, now uh, we had M-16s. Uh, and we, we, <laughs> we couldn't use their ammo, and, we, and he was going to get that and making sure we didn't, didn't run out of, out, out of ammunition. Refusing to consider himself and now greatly weakened, he again exposed himself to enemy fire, volunteering to help knock out a machine gun which had the entire camp pinned down. The fact that he volunteered to go out with that army officer to fire that rocket launcher. Uh, Marv had fired a rocket launcher, we all did in training. But shooting one at the range, at, at trash barrels in training, is different than going out under fire. After he went out and knocked out the machine gun, then he was down prone. And, uh, but even then, you could still hear him talking, and uh, it was always upbeat. That's above and beyond call of duty. I think, I think everybody on the team would agree that was, that, that was heroism showing up. I, I would think Marvin would say that, uh, you know, he really didn't do anything but what he would normally do. And he would also say that every member of that team did what they had to do too.
Shields died from wounds he received after he and others succeeded in destroying enemy machine gun emplacement, thus undoubtedly saving the lives of many of his fellow servicemen in the compound. He posthumously received the Medal of Honor September 13, 1966. He stood to watch for many years. He stood to watch so that we, our families, and our fellow countrymen could sleep soundly in safety each and every night, knowing that a sailor stood to watch. Today, we are here to say, shipmate, the watch stands relieved. Relieved by those you have trained, guided, and led. Shipmate, you stand relieved. We have the watch.